face, certainly to the LCS, uh, performed so well. It's, it's funny, like, this was the player at least I knew the least about of every starting player in the LCS, and he's playing, you know, maybe the best on Golden Guardian so far, a team that a lot of people didn't have particularly high expectations of stuff coming into the tournament, but I believe that has changed, and certainly should have changed at this point here, as they will be up against Team Liquid, who did also pick up a loss today, so not looking for any more of those. In fact, it's the battle to be 2-1 in this particular game, as Team Liquid are going to be on the blue side, drafting up against Golden Guardians on the red. Talia, going to get banned. I think that's a smart one, given Iconic's performance on that. Yeah. And the team's performance around it, too. This is one of the teams, like I said, you know, Talia has uh, high variance in playstyle uh, relating to player skill, but also team skill in utilizing the champion. She's a champion that really relies on synergies with solo laners, you know, set up CC to make you really get the most out of it. And currently, Golden Guardians had been doing that. There's only one death on Iconic. Uh, 25 KDA for himself coming into today. We'll see if he can keep it. The Olaf joins the Talia. Um, so then this leaves up the, the hinge picks here for Graves versus the double AP of the Nidalee and Lilia options, depending on what type of solo laners that you actually want to go for. Well, answer number one is Nidalee on the Team Liquid side, because Galio, Akali, Samira, Olaf, and Pantheon rounded out the other bands alongside Talia. Uh, Lilia up, of course. Renekton up, of course. If Golden Guardians want to go that route, quite a lot of options here, depending on how the teams do want to approach this game. Don't think we'll be seeing that one, Niles. Thanks, though. But uh, you never know. Could be getting spicy. Yeah. It's, it, there's a couple of different directions you can try and go for. Um, Renekton, Kaisa have become notorious, um, especially a lot of AD carry players. In addition to Kaisa being in a very strong state right now, I know that just talking to them, they have so much more fun um, and are passionate about playing Kaisa because you truly do get to embody the ult name, the killer instinct now with Gale Force, you also having the execute. It really does put you in a position to make those highlight plays. Um, and Stixe has done a very good job with all these young players around him thus far in Golden Guardians. I think he's been performing extremely well, which is has gone kind of under the radar considering the surprise that everyone else has with all the other players' performances. Uh, but this is a pretty good core here. You get your safe Syndra for mid lane uh, and paired with the Kai'Sa. Yeah, I almost feel like Stixie is feels a bit more revitalized, you know, at some point. He's changed teams, he was on CLG for so long. You know, he won won some won a title and then did well at MSI and then kind of stagnated a little, never really kind of got back to similar heights. And on this team, again, he is the veteran alongside Newbie, actually, who's uh, got experience from the LLA, to kind of carry these rookies on the top side through and, and develop this team, this developmental team that Golden Guardians have. Ah! Uh, Kobe's cheering for something, he's cheering for Graves. Ivern! Is Ivern Hover? Oh, uh, I for. Because uh, I've been abusing Ivern in, uh, in my rank climb at the beginning of uh, rank season. Uh, I think he's insane right now, uh, partially because uh, he's one of the champions that does rush uh, Moonstone Renewer, one of the mythics that's been getting a lot of attention lately. Uh, it is going to be the Graves though locked in. And again, we see another one of these Nidalee Graves matchups where um, it's it's not an overwhelming advantage in the Nidalee's favor, but it, it is, uh, you know, the slight edge uh, because Graves doesn't have magic resist anymore on True Grit, taken out quite a long time ago. Um, and I do like the setup from Nidalee. Uh, with a little bit better for the, the brush control. Considering the overall comp here too, um, they do have quite a few options. And you can see Golden Guardians don't want to let Alfari have one of these hard carry smash lane champions. I think it's wise to be wary of Alfari right now. This guy has been smashing, uh, picked up right where he left off as soon as he came over here into NA. And Niles also likes to play carries, so you don't want to have to be facing a Renekton if uh, you know if you're uh, if you're a carry player as well if you want to get your hands on something like the GP again um, I know Niles is has been known in the past as a GP one trick uh, and has said himself that it's uh, one of his favorite champions and uh, and he is you know the best at it so uh, we shall see if that also finds its way up here it's a very measured way of putting Niles' opinion of his own gangplank out there, but I agree. Yeah, he's like, I'm, well, I say he ways. thinks it's the best, so. Uh. He, uh, he is very confident in his gangplank skills. Let's put it that way, as Yone and Renekton are going to be the two bands on the GG side. Two supports, Leon and Alstar, two of the bigger ones being taken off the board by Team Liquid here. Core JJ has a very deep pocket still when it comes to champions, so he'll be happy. And of course, he already has Thresh, so he doesn't even need to worry about it. Uh, curious if maybe Newbie wants to play something like Rel, which we have seen get banned in a number of games, but not every team seems to play her. Nautilus instead, which has also been pretty effective the few times we've seen it as well. Most notably, Joey actually looking really good on that one. Yeah, and Kaisa Nautilus is 
is one of the oldest combos here. So good at setting up CC for it. I will say though, um, playing that into the Thresh, into Core JJ's Thresh, every game that Team Liquid have played, Tactical and Core JJ have 2v2, first blood killed, the opponent bottom lane. And they have done it, I'm pretty sure, before like three and a half minutes even in, in, <laughs> in both games. So be very ready. Uh, this is actually the Aphelios Thresh though, so it's not, it doesn't have the same, you know, all in kill pressure like, uh, of course, the Sumira lane that they ran. Uh, but that being said, Core JJ is playing extremely well. His synergy with Tactical has built up um, so much that you still have to definitely be worried about that. With the Orianna lock in for Jensen, uh, definitely not a surprise. <laughs> very, very calm common matchup into the Syndra. You need a couple of extra points in your W for Orianna to really take control to, of the minion wave. Uh, early on, Syndra does have the range advantage because your spheres with 800 range plus the extra little AOE of it, uh, I guess to do a little bit of harassment. Well, uh, if you're wondering, definitely not often Kobe. His points are excellent as always. Uh, I just love that how far he's taking Gangplank here. He's like, hey, now you think you're the best GP in NA? Let's, uh, let's see. Let's see what he got as a counter pick, actually. Oh, on. Really reaching deep for the carries there. Is Nile got him. Go counter. Tank instead. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, uh, I do like this look though. Golden Guardian's taking the route of the team fight um, rather than the 1v1. Uh, Niles uh, showing some humility right here uh, versus Alfari. This is going to be interesting though uh, to see how far Alfari can actually push because I do like uh, this top side look for them. I do expect Armeo to establish control towards the top quadrant of the map. Uh, that being said, of course, playing off core JJ's playmaking ability is always an option for them too. So it's not super one dimensional. Uh, it just does lend itself towards that area of the map because GP uh, can can basically grind out gold versus an Orn. I think the other thing is like, you know, we, we talked a lot about Graves, I think today and just in general throughout the weekend. And uh, you, we, you like Graves and I think I agree Like Graves is very powerful. Gale Force is extremely good as an item. So fitting it into as many champions as you can Feels like a pretty good strategy <laughs> given the current state of the game, but you do need to make sure Graves has you know enough friends, enough people to set him up because he doesn't bring anything other than damage really out of the jungle. And uh, I think as far as setup goes for Golden Guardians, lots of different ways in every lane to kind of give Iconic uh, the help he needs to try and carry through the early game. And if Golden Guardians are going to take this game up against Team Liquid, Iconic's going to need to continue to play at the level he's shown already in the first few days. Gonna need another 25 KDA out of you. Uh, keep yep. it up. <laughs> Great work so far, but uh, now you have to go against Team Liquid. Definitely a tall task uh, as, they, as they have spent big. Uh, exciting to see how this turns out too, because uh, as of right now, you know, and with Team Liquid dropping their game earlier, it's just EG at the top of the ranks here as the only undefeated team still left standing. Uh, again, this is just the group stages though, so uh, it's only gonna matter for your positioning moving towards that knockout stage. I think 100 Thieves, though, with their win over TL earlier today, did show, like, the blueprint for TL is kind of the same it's always been. If you can get ahead early and just keep snowballing, mm. you can beat a team like TL, even though the individual skill and how they convert around objectives, especially mid to late, is so powerful. For Golden Guardians, though, I think a great test about how, you know, how this roster is looking. We've seen the, the individual talent, we've seen that they are very good at early games and do seem to have some of the older Golden Guardians identity where they want to get ahead early and then convert from there. The old Guardi Guardians roster that did that turned into 100 Thieves who look very good already. <laughs> and I think like the fact that you've already gotten to this point where you can show the skills of your players, you show you can get leads, and maybe you're still working on the things like team synergy and, and mid to late game and Mac Wing are a lot cleaner, are already a great sign here. But again, you have a big test here as Newbie is going to meet Jensen here. Does get the hook down. Iconic looking to maybe move forward, but Jensen's going to move out of the way to relative safety. Interesting, he sacrifices um, basically 100, now even more HP uh, to stop that recall there for for Iconic and, and Newbie, who are, aren't really going to feel any sort of that. So Jensen's going to start a little bit down versus a Syndra, which definitely can be dangerous. Both of them chugging Corrupting Potions immediately to try and trade more. Uh, I think that does slightly favor uh, Olive here, uh, as he's going to be the aggressor early on. And neither of the junglers is, uh, you know, super frightening as far as bringing crowd control to that setup. So Oriana Nidalee isn't something he's going to have to, you know, hold himself back against and can continue to try and go for aggressive trades. All right, well, let's hold in my breath for a second because I remembered your first blood stat from TLC. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we see Tactical <laughs> and Core JJ on screen. They might be looking to kill.
I mean, they're waiting in the bush, maybe seeing if uh, 16 Newbie would do something silly early on. Trades here for Nails onto Alfari, looking not too bad, but Alfari, ooh, that first grass proc is real meaty. If Nails is going to look to maybe turn it back around. This is getting ooh. close. Alfari going to be the first to hit the flash key, though. That is why you kite back to your minion wave. Range minions early on do so much damage uh, because basically, your, your one Q as well as your auto attacks is the only calculation that these guys have to take into account. So it's very easy to see the damage coming. Uh, and the thing that most often actually swings those fights is the extra minion damage there. So Niles knows that he's got the upper hand, kiting back to those uh, triple range minions, helping him out there. He holds on to his flash, and Alfari has to ab abort the uh, aggressive play that... Ooh. Nice hook. Newbie going to get plucked out from under the tower briefly by Core JJ, and Tactical is getting this wave shoved in behind LCS right now for 6A, but I imagine that will change as, uh, as the minions move towards We're the zone. We're zoning in. can pick those up. <laughs> Certainly are. And Blaze Olive and Jensen definitely a matchup to keep watch of, but so far so good for a Blaze Olive. Another big test. I mean, in general, this is, uh, you know, Teal are always a terrifying opponent to try and play up against. So if you're looking to test, especially your individual ability, early on in a season, uh, Team Liquid's a pretty good team to go up against. Definitely true. Early teleport does come back here for Alfari uh, after the aggressive trading, just with the long sword refilling his corrupting potion so he can continue to try and play aggressively. Uh, I always love seeing game gangplanks try and abuse their passive early on in the lane phase. Um, should be something that you, you try and keep up as often as possible going for that harassment, especially if you can track the enemy junglers. Uh, with our Mayo spending his time towards the bottom Scuttle Crab, though, and giving up the top one to Iconic, Alfari is going to have to temper that aggression. No flash, no teleport for him. Yep, there is that crab going down. Iconic collects 77 gold. Jensen also walking back to lane soon. Not there yet. The cannon wave, though, is always a nice time to go back, but he used all these mana to, it looks like, to reset the wave here. So Blaze Olive will temporarily be ahead in CS. But uh, right now, he's just trying to deny off as many as he can because knows Jensen wants to TP back right away. Yeah, I, and I always love the Syndra side of the matchup early on for this, especially if you're facing something uh, that doesn't bring crowd control from the jungle, um, like you're saying. So Blaze Olive can go for these aggressive trades, trying to harass Jensen uh, while finishing up the CS. But as you get more and more levels into your, your W4 Orianna, you get more and more wave control. And that's why the teleport is expended around your level 4, level 5 here for Jensen on his tier back. Uh, corrupting Potion plus Biscuits. He's got lots of sustain for himself. And it's just up to Armeo to keep a little bit of vision on one side and continue tracking Graves uh, to make sure that the Orianna can continue to scale here. Really nice from Jensen there. Knowing you're looking for that recall, it's just such a nuisance to have it cancelled. So Jensen going to go ahead and do that because a Blaze Olive is out of mana. does have the TP, so probably going to be committing that to come back to the wave, but Jensen's going to get a chance to deny a couple of the Dominions off as well as a Blaze Olive does indeed commit the teleport to come back to lane. So... And Set right early there, trading here for the mid laners. Right there, you're creating a situation that that doesn't look tense at all because there's no camera movement. You know, it's just him going right back to lane. But whenever, well, okay, oh, good hook from newbie. Six day forced to cleanse off there. Attack and quarter day continuing to bring the beat down. Oh, gravity gun after the flay means newbie takes a lot more damage. So just the cleanse down, definitely a low cooldown summoner spell, but keeping them under their tower with the extra minion wave here opens up our Mayo, uh, you know, to finish up this dragon. They know uh, with Graves up on top side finishing Krugs, that should be the easy objective for them. Tactical Core JJ have just been so insanely reliable uh, and getting control over bottom side has such big rewards here. Uh, because there is no Rift Herald this early on. So it's not like you're even giving anything up on the top side. Uh, yes, Alfari does have to play a little bit more cautiously, knowing that he doesn't have Flash, but um, it's it's not going to cost him anything as he intelligently just levels his ult, immediately uses it on the wave, uh, and goes for the safe recall. I love that play from Alfari. Uh, you know, we always talk about how aggressive he plays lane and his big laning stats, but it's also really impressive how you avoid possibilities of a strong side from your opponents up by you. Knowing that uh, Graves is probably up there since you're overloading bottom side, not overextending, uh, you know, letting Orn have a few waves of the minions right at his tower, not as big a deal as possibly dying there for the gangplank. So intelligent use already, even though we haven't had a kill yet. Yeah, we did see that pressure kind of move further down to the bottom side. Uh, Ameo was, I believe, down there looking to maybe 
chance to tower dive. So Sixteen Newbie did play respectfully. Also, Niles took the minions on like a little merry-go-round in the top lane, but uh, I'm sure that's going to be broken relatively soon. I think already has actually as Alfari is back to lane nice and happily with the Sheen finished. Feeling just fine here as the GP. Big wave here in mid lane here for Jensen. He's going to have to reverse that, but shouldn't be too tricky as we have a look at the total gold right now. Unsurprisingly, it is tactical at the top of the leaderboard. A plays all of actually right behind him, which is a good look for him, but tactical again alongside Cordo Day has just been such a consistent force. Even in the game they lost first 100 Thieves against one of, if not the best, current bottom lanes in the LCS, they still got first blood at level one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm glad that we're seeing uh, the Aphelios come back. I know, I know people memed on this champion for, for many, many years, but uh, at the Ooh. start of this tournament, um, I was talking about Primal a lot, and he's really been missing out on not, not seeing the Aphelios in the you know the first couple days. Uh, since then, we have had uh, quite a decent amount of it. I really feel like the champion did well in the off season. Um, after the little buffs to his ultimate they just got and the changes to the items, it feels so nice. Um, oh, here we go. Good snipe from Cold Day Day. No damage. Here, as well. here we go. Right, <laughs> Aphelios is in the river. The blaze all did get Jensen. But uh, Niles also looking kind of low here. He's going to run into Alfari. Ooh, one ulti. This is actually going to be a 1v1 attempt here for Niles because there's no one here to help him. But the damage is good. Alfari getting low. He does have the flash. It doesn't have to burn it just yet. Niles commits the ulti, but can't quite complete the kill. Sent him a message, though. Uh, nice little combo there. Uh, is going to also free up this possible Rift Herald. Armeo's coming over, uh, but they did lose track uh, of positioning on Newbie. I think if he cancels this recall, They'll be fine. They can finish it up here because uh, they've got the extra person advantage. You see bottom side, Core JJ is working to pressure on the tower, and it just comes down to possible smite steal. Yeah, back to the scries. Bloom there for Newbie just to get some vision onto Armeo. So Penguin does dab it out as Iconic indeed collects the Rift Herald. Unfortunately, Six has been zoned very far away from this tower thanks to this extended roam, I guess, extended by the cancel in some ways. And as always, uh, some things about Aphelios have not changed, and certainly the spinning blades of turret death uh, continue to exist as the first tower and a big chunk of gold are going to go over to Tactical. Yeah, and it it does look like, oh man, the Golden Guardians gave up so much for going for that Rift Herald, but they were already getting abused quite heavily under the tower. Uh, and so you're kind of in a, in a tough situation anyway, and they make the call to say, okay, we're actually just going to give up the entire first turret bonus with the extra turret plates here and exchange it for the Rift Herald by sending Newbie up there. Um, I, I still think they could have held out um, on, the, on the bottom side and, and, and kept them off considering the, the last couple plates are the strongest. Top side though, looking at a possible dive. Yeah, didn't swap Jensen with this room. Very well timed there, and there's a shockwave is good. Niles has got the knockup, but the GP ult is down, and first blood, 10 minutes in, is going to go to Jensen. Oh, Iconic, though, finds it, even with the flash. Collateral damage, indeed, as Jensen will fall. Now, Alfari in trouble, Iconic continuing. Dead man the walking. Kobe. Ooh, <laughs> the alcove, though, does keep Alfari safe, with Iconic not quite able to get the double. All right, Core JJ going to try and make some quick moves over to the mid. Doesn't get the Ganon minion for himself. Um, interesting uh, pick up there as uh, it was the flash still. Jensen flashed in a line. So you still get the explosion for Graves with your ultimate at the end, and the uh, extended damage killed him anyway. Uh, you have to flash perpendicular uh, versus the Graves ultimate uh, if you want to try and live that scenario. So Jensen losing the summoner spell plus the gold over to Iconic, uh, definitely the big carry for Golden Guardians. Regardless though, I think Team Liquid still shrugged that one off. They've got a ginormous gold lead, uh, largely obviously in part to Tactical and Core JJ's work on the bottom side and the sacrifice that Golden Guardians made in order to get that uh, Rift Herald play for topside. Here's another look at it, though. Jensen starts it out as the range champion, knows that he can tank it, no problem. He's not in danger, tanks the extra shot. Um, but here, the, even though seeing it, uh, it was very close to even the end of the explosion range there, so maybe he thought he was going to fully outrange even the balloon at the end. Uh, regardless, Dragon will be started up. Teleport's only available here for Niles to join. Golden Guardians would have to sacrifice some top turret plates if they wanted to do that. Oh, I really thought that was going to go the other way, but Iconic does secure it with the smite. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Afari had already used it earlier and TP'd up to lane, so it wasn't able to join there, so Golden Guardians, by all accounts, should have gotten that Drake, and uh, one Nidalee Spear aside, they do indeed get it.
All right, see if uh, Team Liquid can continue to push this ahead, because when your bottom side is uh, taken so early like that, it actually lends a lot of power to the threat with these Gangplank ultimates. So I expect this, the next one here for Alfari to be saved. You kind of use that cooldown as a threat to your opponents um, for, you, for the side wave control, because you have a lot of options with it. You can either turn around uh, attempted picks on people in the long lane, or you can rush through a, a minion wave by just GP ulting the minion wave and trying to make the big objective play to gain basically 30 seconds of time where your Gangplank ultimate annihilates the minion wave, allowing you to make the early step, you know, setting up the vision for Core JJ and Ar Armeo uh, to pull off a, a Thresh Nidalee possibility for one of those plays. So you see already Jensen pushing up the side wave uh, and the full control here with the deep wards inside the blue quadrant of the jungle of Golden Guardians. Uh, Team Liquid really taking away any of the, the, the big threats here of those picks uh, from the gold side of Golden Guardians. All right, well, two things to notice here. As Iconic, actually, it was both of them that I was going to mention here. Uh, number one is that the Rift Tunnel was running out, <laughs> so Iconic did have to actually drop it in the base and is going to move down towards mid, but very slowly. The other is that he's actually gone a model shield bow, which is different from the Gale Forces we've seen on, uh, I think, every other grave so far on the LCS. Obviously, shield bow, still good on ADs. We've seen on uh, a couple different AD champions already, probably most notably Samira, but uh, definitely a different look here for graves uh, in this game. Yeah, I, it gives you so much more tankiness, and it, it gives you the life steal super early on too. Uh, I think he's worried about you know possible mid range damage with the gangplank. Newbie gonna get sniped perhaps there. The ulti is out from Core JJ, but he's not taking enough damage to go down. It's tactical that will get that kill, but Niles is here. They get one. The shockwave does hit, but Niles finds two with the ulti there. As tactical is forced to flash out of the way, they need to kill the Sefelios though, and they're not able to do so. So tactical is just gonna rip through the rest of the Golden Guardians. Jensen, the one to secure the last hit, is iconic battling Almeo here, but Jensen is in support, and even with the shield bow, I don't think iconic is gonna be able to get out of this one, but still can maybe get the middle. It's gonna be awfully close. Iconic, he wants it. He needs to keep the KDA alive. He's Slides over the wall to safety. A blaze all of the <laughs> Flash R is enough for the kill. Nice and easily as Alfari going to move into the ring. Oh, great battle chain. They attack the blaze all of uh, Stun not quite connecting. Alfari going to flash in instead to make sure he can finish off the Syndra. One Q needed. Bell is out. And a blaze all of surely going to be left for dead here in the alcove. And that is it. Last Q there as Alfari is going to grab the last kill of that exchange. And in scenarios like that, you got to look. As soon as they're chasing someone down, which where can they push on quickly? Because there is a lot of standing gold for them to take. Two outer towers on the top side of the map still standing, so Team Liquid immediately try and push in these waves to get uh, their resets off for themselves, as uh, we do have a Drake incoming in 1 minute and 45 seconds, uh, as well as the arrival of Rift Hailed number 2 ready. So Alfari just keeping pressure on bottom side. You get the minion wave all the way in, and already the extra control wards have been bought by Core JJ, moving up here on the Thresh to try and lay the stakes uh, to pick up Rift Tail number two. Alrighty, Jensen swoops in towards the top side of the map. Niles is going to be met here. There's Core JJ also roaming up. Early shock there for Jensen to keep him in place. Niles does have the flash, but at 3v1 here on the top side of the map, out of tower, not going to save you. Niles too far forward gets picked up by Armeo. And that's what these early resets off of that off that fight actually gets you. You know, while they're picking up the extra straggler kill, the early recall, uh, Core JJ comes back out, mobility boots and control wards in hand, immediately makes a play for the team. Nice job there by Jensen setting up with the shockwave as Niles was getting pretty greedy uh, at that tower, not respecting uh, the recall timer there. Um, possibly because of the extra time spent on chasing down that kill, but it is going to be off of that multiple objectives. One greedy stay here by the Orn turns into not just a kill, but two objectives. Tower plus Rift Hail number two going into their hands. Well, good placement there by Ablaze Olive to get the stun, but unless they can get the wave crashing in, Iconic not going to get much done here. Oh, I love this from Core JJ. Aware of this possible situation, just hanging out in Lantern Rage. It's going to be a 3v1, but Core JJ is here to maybe save the day, and he knows he needs to get in there for Jensen and Golden Guardians, actually. The wave's cleared out, so don't even go for it. Core JJ actually on the offense now. Shockwave is back and ready to go, but Jensen not quite in range to sna uh, snag Iconic. And this is such a great example in tracking your opponents. Core JJ utilizing his mobility boots uh, and resetting immediately after the topside play to go hover bottom. He's one step ahead of them. Alfari, though, a couple steps. 
Base tanking the Grave Zolt, which Iconic, I think, mostly used to get away from the impending situation. Niles is ready with his own ulti, but it's only rank one. Richard gonna get popped in mid for the ultimate distraction in both the team fight and the attempted Drake take that may be coming up. The Team Liquid playing behind their vision here. Jensen ready with the Shockwave as always. TL is gonna push forward. The Rift Child not gonna get too much done, unfortunately, for her. The Golden Guardians clear it out, and they are going to have some room to move in and try and contest, perhaps, for this objective. Niles does have the ulti, going to let it rip. The Nautilus isn't going to quite kit anyone else, but Armeo does get moved up. Niles is in there. They're going to try and assassinate the enemy. Jungle and Niles, indeed, is able to get it. Going to be a 4v5, but Niles now going to be killed off as Jensen with another great shockwave picks off the Ornn. I love that confidence, though. I mean, no ward in the brush here on the side of Golden Guardians, but they know they got the hit on the follow-up CC. A Blaze Olive follows that knock-up with the long-range Sinja stud, and now says, we got him, he's going in! Finishes off the kill, it's now 4v4 at the Drake. War Gravity Gun, called AJ gets the follow-up hook and Tactical slays another. And Golden Guardians are going to try and get the Dragon and get out of there. Only one smite in the pit, and it belongs to Iconic, and indeed the Drake will as well. Iconic also making his great escape. Blastcone's out to safety, but Newbie and Stixay, perhaps not Ooh. so lucky. Stixay, though, with a big outplay, finds the kill on the core JJ, and then flashes out to safety, and Newbie going to run out of there as well as Jensen trying to chase him down. Jensen, no shockwave, but does have his flash, and the slow should be enough here, but Newbie off to the wall he goes. Can he live? The answer is no, as Jensen is able to seal yet another kill. And the Dragon is nice for Golden Guardians, but it's not going to mean a whole lot because you look at the game state and they're not going to be in a position to force Dragon stacking themselves. Um, they do have the strong team fight with Orn and Nautilus, but they're starting to hemorrhage so much gold, so much power to Team Liquid that Team Liquid will have full setup of these side lanes and should be able to control the map, which leads into your vision. Here's another look at it, though. I just still like you know, seeing the fact right on your screen, how there is just no hesitation. It's full killer instinct from this Ornn. Niles goes right in, follows up the CC combo uh, for the headbutt. Unfortunately for him, Ornn is not an assassin, is not, uh, uh, you know, have that much mobility. So if you flash in like that, then all the ranged carries here on Team Liquid do take him down. Then though, the start here, this is where Olive gets locked up. It is tactical with the gravity snare that's able to make this play for Team Liquid. Uh, and just that one snare on the key carry means everything. You lose your mid laner there, it allows Team Liquid to flood in uh, and pick up the extra kills on the back here. Despite Stixay making that great play um, and getting the extra kill, which I love, and the escape flashing out, Newbie won't be so lucky. Uh, so it's just uh, Iconic and Stixay that live after the fact, uh, in addition to getting that dragon for themselves. Regardless of how well they were able to try and play the aftermath, the fact that a Blaze Olive got picked off here on the Syndra to start it out was critical and, and allowed Team Liquid to push right up. Now they've got the 4-1 and they're not going to stop. Yeah, 5,000 gold ahead for Team Liquid. Mid out of tower down, mid tier 2. Under fire, probably not going to last too much longer either here as Iconic. At least keeping the KDA nice and steady. 102 right now. Oh, I Ooh. spoke so too soon. I've cursed him. Iconic will be slain by Core JJ. Core JJ with the timing on there. As soon as Jensen Scott, I hit him. But Core JJ's hook is already in the air, right out of your shockwave displacement into the death sentence of Core JJ. Ooh, good oh! Killer instinct in, and that's a great shutdown for Sticks. Hey, Golden Guardian still have life in them. Yeah, but Armeo starting to hurt with these spears. Yeah, I was about to compliment Team Liquid on doubling Iconic's deaths for the tournament, and yet. Really good rebuttal. This Golden Guardians team always looking for the counterplay, always looking for a kill for themselves. Uh, landing a hook of his own there. Uh, Newbie was able to follow up on that one. All right, well, Niles clears this wave out. Jensen's actually been the one side landing for most of this game, but does want to stay respectful with players dropping off of the map. He's got 11 stacks in the book right now as well. Magi's very <laughs> much gold efficient and has the uh, extra speed as well on top of the Leandries, which, of course, is the mythic of choice here for Jensen in this game. So Team Liquid continuing to snowball further and further ahead. Golden Guardians with some good looks, but they'll need to have, again, putting the team fight to good use here around a major objective. It's not enough to get one or two picks, even though they do look very nice. And I would this uh, one, by the way. Just quickly on the Leandries, when you're facing the Orn team, Orn and Nautilus, I love that too. There's that, what I was talking about though, Shockwave displacement into Death Sentence, while Iconic is in the animation of firing off his ult. He can't do anything because that CC chain is just so clean. And yet, 
W lands here for 6A. Uh, the Lantern goes out, but as soon as he starts to take the Lantern, a uh, Blaze Olive. Perfect timing. If you hit him right as he takes it, he starts the, the move block here with the Lantern. Uh, it gets overridden by the Syndra stun, allowing Newbie to follow that one up. And, and that's some really clean play there from Ablaze Olive to get a counter kill for themselves. Too bad that it doesn't actually amount to much because they still lose out on the mid pressure as Team Liquid barrels through. Teleport comes in, he wants to make another big play. Yeah, it's Ablaze Olive hit now, is also ready with the ulti. There it goes, Yon Horn is blown. Who's the pick? It's going to be tactical for the look, but Armeo, the only one to get CC'd up. Call JJ again ready with the clutch lights as the Lantern out to pluck tactical back to safety. And now they've got priority on mid, should be able to answer that tower regardless of missing and whiffing the, uh, the Cinder Stun this time around. They still get some gold for themselves, still are able to push Team Liquid off of uh, retreating back from secondary turret taken. And this is in setup for a decently big Ocean Dragon. Number three doesn't give you the big bonus, but it does come with the added pressure that can sometimes afford you better positioning, which means a lot. Oh, good hook again from Cordo Jane. Now it's going to be forced to flash out. Charges off to safety as well. But Alfari busy split pushing in the top side of the map with the Hydra and the Divine Sunderer. Uh, someone going to have to go and answer this, and Golden Guardian's going to make a real iffy trade here for this Ocean Drake. Yeah, I like the macro here from Team Liquid. They're oh, going to say, good. okay, you want to go uh, and, and set up your Ocean Soul? Well, we're going to give you two decision points Baron or top inhibitor turrets. No jungle here, they have to go. Core JJ, they're gonna almost get the hook. Dragon's gonna go down. That's the green line for Armeo to just smite this Baron at his leisure. And indeed, Team Liquid mm. will collect both top, the top part and the Baron here as they have full control of this side of the map. Alfari even slowing down Newbie. Looking to get the parlays moving in that barrel almost going off there as Newbie's gonna be forced to fight, but a fight he can't win here as Niles is ready to go, but he doesn't have the ulti three-man shockwave from Jensen as tactical, lets it rip in the front side, and a Blaze Olive is doing what he can. Omeo is low, but Niles is slain. A Blaze Olive will die as well, and it's gonna be the ace as tactical. He's popping off in the team fight iconic. The KDA just keeps dropping as Team Liquid gonna grab the Bud Light Ace. Oh my goodness, Team Liquid style on him with the macro first and the team fight right after. Everybody from Golden Guardians finds a quick path back to the fountain, and Team Liquid will find a quick path to their second win. Looking a lot cleaner here as Golden Guardians outmatched, I think maybe as we expected, but still had some good moments. But it's Team Liquid all day here for this game at least, as they'll take down the Nexus Towers. Newbie just going to hex flash around the world just for some funsies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly as KDA minded as Iconic, perhaps there as Niles is ready with the ulti. Never sees a fight he doesn't like that you have to love from any team. And as Golden Guardians, I'll keep them out of the Nexus for now. That's a good stunt under tactical. They need to finish off the job, but can't quite do it just yet. An actual 3v5 with Super Minions and the Baron as Core JJ can do no wrong. Plucks a Blaze Olive out of the sky and gives Armeo yet another kill as Iconic. Gonna try and defend the Nexus this time, but I don't think it's possible. Golden Guardians doing what they can. They're pulling minions away. They're trying to taunt Team Liquid away from this Nexus. Dixay gonna make the big play, but the Shockwave onto himself from Jensen. Let's him live with a sliver of HP, and Iconic continues to rack up death as Team Liquid are playing with their food. Newbie in the fountain is gonna get pot shots fired in, but ultimately Team Liquid will do what we expected and pick up their second win of the tournament. 25-23. Ah, it's still ticking. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, I was trying to get a good end game clock there. Regardless, that is going to be an end to our weekend, our first weekend of the LCS lock-in tournament. Ton of fun here. We've seen so many stories evolving. You know, some of the big uh, stars coming over, even struggling early on. A lot of the rookies having breakout performances. Uh, so I'm definitely excited for week number two here to try and follow up. Golden Guardians do drop this one. Uh, regardless, though, I think they've had a really good showing as everybody placed them hard 10th. Uh, and they had really competitive games uh, in the first couple that they had uh, the, uh, the first couple days. Uh, this one, though, Team Liquid just took care of business. Yeah, like you said, you know, the, the Money Mountain versus the, uh, you know, I guess just the, the wallet you find on the street that maybe has a couple bucks in it. Like, it was going to be an uphill battle regardless for Golden Guardians, but I think they did show some promise here in this weekend and even in this game. But Team Liquid continuing to show that they are one of the best, a super classy team and uh, looking scarier than ever. And I, I just have to keep saying it every time we watch Team Liquid play, Kobe, like, what can't Core JJ do? 
true. We're going to have to put them to, uh, to some tests here. I feel like this yeah. could be a spin-off series. Of Legends. <laughs> this will be a spin-off series <laughs> where we have we think of these crazy tasks for him to try and pull off. Uh, and Core JJ still manages to do it. Uh, honestly, he's got one of the best stories. I, I love how he came over uh, you know, to NA, learned from Kiwi Kid, had a role swap, went back to Korea, won a world championship. And then came, you know, came to his real home. <laughs> yeah, I think also like some just good moments. Jensen's still looking like, hey, by the way, Oriana's my most played champion of all time, and I'm really good at it. I played Zolov again, like tried to tussle in the lane, but I think Jensen just too aware, too intelligent with how he's playing with his teammates, and also just extremely accurate with every shockwave. And Alfari, it wasn't like maybe the big carry GP game we would have wanted, but still looking clean as ever, and like he's meshing with this team maybe faster than we could have expected. So a great effort across the board for Team Liquid, and a very classy looking win for them there. But with the weekend's games are wrapped up, it means we have to award our first MasterCard Player of the Week, and for the kickoff of locking that accolade, go 